Now we have a meet the speaker session after the future of chatbots panel and Catherine will be there to field some questions. Right, so next on our panel, I want to give a little bit of a background. So one of the things that we're exploring in the future of chatbots is the format that we communicate, whether it's text or, or voice or images. And so what's really interesting on the next session is uh, Harry McCartney and, and Paula McK McKillen have got a really interesting project which is trying to solve a difficult support question using images and it's quite a radical new approach and it really demonstrates the usage of visuals and chatbot to really transform customer experience. So without further ado, Paula and Harry, please join me. Um, so Harry and I are going to spend the next 20 minutes, as Julian said, um, introducing you to our, our new trial that we've done at RS Components. But for those of you that don't know who RS Components are, just allow me a couple of minutes to take you through a quick walkthrough of our history. So back in 1937, our founders, Sebastian and Waring, um, in a northwest London lock-up garage, started selling radio parts um, to television shops. And then in 1954, we started selling electronic components um, to electronic engin engineers. And our service back in 1937 was to do everything really, really well, and our ethos hasn't changed. If we fast forward to today, we are a 1.7 billion pound revenue organization. We operate in most markets, Asia Pacific, EMEA, and the Americas. And we're a multi-channel organization with a very strong digital presence in every single one of those markets. Our CEO's vision for our organization is to become first choice for customers, for suppliers, and for our employees. So looking at new ways to innovate, looking at introducing new products as well as services to our customers and to our employees is really, really important. And if you think about our customer base, our customer base are, are engineers. So there isn't anything that they don't know. They know what they need and they know the type of product that they're looking for. So that gave Harry and I a really brilliant challenge uh, when we show you what we've done. So the idea was born because we've got an innovation. Uh, we've got an innovation department. We're taking innovation really seriously at RS. Uh, we've got a senior vice president. He goes and sells all about the ideas. And then we've got a vice president who Harry and the team have worked really, really closely with. And because they are a specific department, they sit separate to the rest of RS, which means they can take loads of ideas from all of our colleagues around the world and be in a safe environment to really build that into concept so that what we launch out into the business, whether it be our colleagues or our customers, we're launching a minimal viable product that allows us to test it and scale. But we're not perfect and we're not brilliant at everything. So whilst we've got a separate innovation department, you know, and chatbots, digital assistants, um, and all of these things AI, it's very, very new to us as an organization. Hence why we brought Harry and the team on because they're the experts. So allow me to hand you over to Harry and Harry will talk to you a little bit more about what we've done. Uh, I think we'll be all right. It's very strange talking to a room of people wearing <laughs> headphones. But, uh, and it's about a thousand degrees up here, so I'll try and um, get through this quickly. Um, so we founded in 2010, uh, we founded in Berlin. Uh, we have an office in Berlin and in London. Um, we build AI-based systems for Fortune 500s, for corporates, and we do that specifically with an iterative rather than an incremental methodology. Um, the purpose of that is that most AI is used to automate a specific process. Typically that process is currently being done by a group of human beings, and the way they perform that process is informal processes in their head, um, rather than written down as a specification. So it's very difficult when you're trying to automate that process to actually figure out 
the rules by which that process is happening in, in human form. So we've adapted a methodology, let's call it iterative rather than incremental, so that effectively we're doing AI prototyping. So we take a process, attempt to automate it, get the business users to see if that process accurately mirrors what they're currently doing. Usually it doesn't, and then we work forwards from there. Um, as a company, we have a, a set of infrastructure. Uh, in the chatbot space, which is I'm going to talk about, there is very immature tools currently to do things like automated deployments, automated testing. Uh, you tend to have to build your own tools quite often. So we've built up some of those. Um, and obviously, within the company, we have a great deal of expertise, um, many data scientists, software engineers, and so on. Uh, as Paula mentioned, we typically work with innovation departments. Um, and we do it in a, such a way that we typically build something which we would then host. Because the challenge is that for most of the clients we work with, they don't have the skills in-house to run the platform that we build once it's delivered. So typically, what will happen is, after we've delivered it, uh, we will continue to host it. All right. So we have a sort of specific approach to um, customer service automation. Um, we think of a bot as a new member of staff. Uh, it's for that reason that um, off-the-shelf off the solutions generally don't work. Uh, I've written there, it's like you have a very clever intern off the shelf. And the whole challenge, and that's why we use this iterative methodology, is to think of a bot as like a new member of staff. They might be very clever, they might be very smart, but they've got no idea how the business runs. So most of what you're doing when you're implementing a chatbot is training the bot in the idiosyncratic processes that your business uses. Um, and that, I believe, is best done as an iterative process. I think with customer experience, um, generally customer pain points are found in the boundaries between departments, so that um, if you are uh, a customer using a particular company's services, it's that experience of being transferred around uh, between different departments, which is usually the biggest friction. And that, we think, of bots are really good because they can actually be multidisciplinary. So they can learn the work of different departments so you have a single point of contact, rather than that experience of being transferred around. Um, so the tech challenges of doing this. Um, so RS components, they had two things they really wanted to achieve. One was to automate customer services so that they continue, continue to grow at the same speed. And one of the blockers to that is that it's very difficult for them to identify products. They've got about 3 million products and very difficult. Um, many of them look very similar. So when a customer reports a problem, it's difficult to pinpoint which specific product they're talking about. Um, so the image recognition part of this solution is designed to solve that problem. Essentially, customer uploads an image and the system can figure out which product they're talking about from that image. So we did this with TensorFlow. It's a technology we used. Uh, it's a highly kind of customized uh, neural net. It's actually a hierarchy of neural nets that we built within TensorFlow. Uh, there were 7,000 images, 550,000 separate products, 4,000 categories. And the technology or the methodology that we used is something called extreme classification. Uh, and we were able to get more than 80% accuracy on, the, on a top five algorithm. So that means in the training set, when the customer uploads a picture, the results would have the product that it was within the top five over 80% of the time. Um, I'm actually going to do a live demo of that in a moment, uh, which is probably a foolhardy thing to do, but uh, we'll try. Yes. Go for it. <laughs> um, OK, and one other thing worth mentioning. So we started off using Dialogflow, which is another tool from Google. Um, it's very good at handling context within chatbots. So it understands more about what the customer is interested in as the conversation proceeds. But it's not very good at recognizing uh, a large number of different entities. So within chatbots, the key step is entity recognition. And dialogue flow above about 5,000 entities can't do it. And so that might be everything from voltages to colors, uh, names of products. These are things that dialogue flow matches out of text. Spacey is a much better system for that, and we ended up building something where Spacey and Dialogflow are used in conjunction. Uh, so Spacey handles en entity detection, and Dialogflow is handling context. All right, I'll get through this quickly. Um, so I think on the right here, you've got the idea that the chatbot is a, is a place where all of the different departments are interfacing with each other. The current state on the left there is where all the departments have informal relationships with each other. And if you phone up as a customer, you're going to get, that's essentially how you might get redirected around the, around the internal structures of the company. 
what the promise of a chatbot is that it can kind of bolt those departments together with a set of rules so that the customer is only talking to one persona. Um, the way that we built it in order to get, we had stakeholders from each of those different departments. We get them out of their day-to-day -day work. We put them into an innovation team and then we work in iterations where we show them prototypes and we try and iteratively discover the rules that they're using in their everyday work. Typically, when you first ask them what they do, what they tell you is not really what they do and you only find out what they actually do once you've shown them a, a bot uh, simulation of what they thought they did and then they say, oh no, that's not it at all. <laughs> Uh, and that's a process that we use. Um, in this case, we did six iterations of that, and we managed to get something live in three months. Uh, the internal tool, which I'm going to show um, the image recognition for, uh, is currently live within the customer service department, and the chatbot is going out to 5% of the customer base on the 15th of July. Um, so, ah, so, um, one thing we wanted to, to include here, uh, which might be interesting for some of you, is that the bot, we wanted it to have a certain kind of personality so that it's open about the fact that it's a bot. Um, so it doesn't try to hide the fact that you're talking to an automated system. But nevertheless, it likes to think that it's a person despite being a bot. So it's a non-human person called Ruby. And this was a long process we went through with different stakeholders to try and make sure that the bot reflected their brand values in some way. Um, so Ruby will say things like that it's still learning. If it doesn't understand something, it'll say, I'm new here. I'm still learning the procedures. Uh, it talks a little bit about the heritage of RS. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a very sort of personal thing. And that you'll see from some of the language that she uses, it carries more of a personality than some bots you might be used to. All right. So and for the demo. All right. So the first thing, in fact, so this is an internal customer facing, uh, internal customer service tool. Um, it's a simple way to demonstrate image recognition. As I say, these people in this department who use this tool, they have customers phoning them up, sending in emails. Often they include images in the email saying, I've bought one of these, it doesn't work. And I wanted to give you a, a simple example of where that can be used. So they would uh, log into this and here's one I made earlier, which is a USB cable. It's a specific kind of USB cable. I think it's mini display port on one end and USB female B on the other end. Uh, RS sells about 7,000 different types of cable, so this is quite a specific problem that they have, recognizing cables. And you can see from the image I uploaded, which may have done too quickly, uh, it's correctly identified the type of cable that it is, simply from, um, oops, simply from the image of it, which was this image. Uh, I'll show you another example of that. RS actually also sells stationery. Uh, these kinds of products are actually really difficult because they don't have any very distinguishing features. Um, and as you can see, it correctly identifies that it's a stapler. That seems quite simple. You wouldn't believe the amount of um, sweat and tears that went into making that work. Um, you can also upload multiple images. Uh, one of the challenges we had with this is that of these products, there's literally only one training image of each product. So the actual training data that we were basing this on was really sparse, mm. uh, which made it much more difficult than it would be if you had, say, 10, 15 images of each product all taken in different lightings from different angles. We've actually got one image. The two images I just tested this with on uh, this with are um, both taken in our office. You know, we bought some of the products and, and took them. Uh, so that's that. So far, so good. Um, this is the chatbot. So this would actually be embedded, embedded on the RS website. So you can see, hello Ruby, she says some different things that she can do. Um, what I'm going to do is, I think, ask for a refund.
She's not very good at reading spelling mistakes, so you have to get it right. OK. So that seems to work. And then you have to give her an order number. And you can give a, a reason why. Generally, you can type those things as well, and it will actually strip out what you mean from the typed version. Uh, and yeah, you can say that you'd like her to automatically schedule a refund. Uh, and just to give you, so that's the refund process end to end, and it can do replacements and returns as well, a few variations, and you can type in what I've just done in a lot of different ways that it will understand. Uh, and just a sort of little demonstration of the persona, you can ask her questions like this. Should she actually gives different answers each time you ask that question, but um, there's a few little details like that, which as part of the brand piece will you know, make it feel like a more well-rounded experience and more consistent for customers. So that's the end of the demo. And it's the wrap up. How many questions do you get that are not related to components? Uh, not related to refunds, returns? So yeah, like the, the, this, this chit chat that you're seeing. Um, quite a lot. Do you um, have a rough percentage in terms of like more than 10%, less than 10%? Less than 10%. I mean, the thing is about RS's customers is that they're, it's a B2B business. So the customers are actually, they know what they want. They know more about the products than often the staff do. They're pretty focused. So they, they generally want to be, you know, get what they're looking for quickly, which is why this kind of automation works really well there. Great. Um, Thank you. There's still the occasional weird thing that people <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so just to wrap up, so as Harry said, we're going live with the chatbot on the 15th of July in the UK. Um, what's brilliant about this is we're able to scale this into a potentially multilingual um, bot and our service then becomes 24-7. So we, we start to operate in terms of volume and meeting customer demand on the basis that we can do more with the same amount of resource. Um, so not only is it operationally efficient, then it's also delivering a seamless and um, consistent customer experience because the customers are going to get the same answers every single time. From our voice of the customer feedback that we get from our customers, and we've had about over a quarter of a million verbatim comments, one of the things repeated in every country, and probably you experience yourselves in your own or organizations, is we all want everything now. So we want it quick and we want it easy. And what we've learned with the tests on Ruby is because it's almost instantaneous in the answers that it gives, then we know that customers are more likely to come back and use this channel as opposed to writing an email or calling up and, and, and speaking to one of our advisors. The beauty of this, it also enables us to learn again and scale and add on additional features and services, which we're, we're just starting to talk about to Harry with, so, so that's really exciting. So we, we're just not going to stop with Ruby. And, and finally, it's, it starts to become a single point of contact um, for customers. So like I mentioned, we're a multi-channel organization, but we've got a really, really strong digital presence. And if we think we, we do about over 2 million interactions with customers via the various channels, what we're really excited about is we'll really start to guide the customer to the right channel of choice so that we can answer all of their inquiries in the most quickest, smartest way. So with that, thank you very much for um, enjoying, hopefully, this session in the searing heat. And we'll take any questions.